policy, but you're always going to miss some. It's just, I can't just sit here for half an hour doing nothing with all the other kids. All right. Today, though, we're going to focus for reading on this idea. Context clues. A lot of times when you're reading, you come across words, and you may not know what that word means. So in order to know what it means, you could go get a dictionary. Look it up, see what the meaning of the word is, and then go back to reading. But how many of you would agree, I really don't want to stop reading to go get a dictionary and look up the word more? Okay, I don't either. That's where context clues come in. Okay, here's what context clues are. I suppose I should be writing it real here. Wait a minute. I may have one of those already written for context clues. In fact, it's right here. Put that up, I'll put it in the back. Okay, so here we go. Context clues mean this using words from a sentence or a paragraph, sometimes the information can come from anywhere in the paragraph. To help you understand an unknown word or phrase. Okay? So watch this. Let's pretend that when I'm reading, I see this word plain. And I know that the word plain has different definitions, doesn't it? And I'm not sure which one it's supposed to be. Context clues will tell me exactly what this word is supposed to be. Look at this. The passengers boarded their plane for their flight to New York. Passengers, well, those are the people that ride on things like trains and planes and cars, right? Your passengers. Boarded, that means you get a board, right? You get into something, okay? A flight, oh, that's like flying through the air. So by using the words passengers boarded in flight, I know that this word plane means that thing that goes up in the sky and can fly around, okay? That's what it is. Now, that's an easy word, right? Mm -hmm. But do you see how all of these words help it make sense, okay? Now, what we're going to do with context clues is first we're going to do something Hopefully it'll be kind of fun. Because I could write a sentence and use a completely gibberish word. Okay? I'm going to make up a word. Here's my word. Phleglum. Do you guys know what a phleglum is? No. Oh. Okay, well, I'm going to use my word in a sentence for you. The tire of my flight wheel was flat, so I couldn't ride it with my friends. What do you guys call a You know what you call a flight wheel? You were unfamiliar with that word. You call it something else? A car? Maybe a car. What? Okay. Who had says, eh, it's not a car? What am I talking about? It's, a, it's like that thing that holds your tire on. Like the, okay. it's like the thing that spins around your tires. I need a word. Uh, no. Yes. Is it a bike? A bike? Could be it. Who thinks a flag a bike? Okay. What context clues help us know it's either a car or a bike? What do you think? Um, because it has tires. Okay, it's something with a tire. 
Cars have tires. Bikes have tires. Who says, I, I don't think it's a car, just don't pan your legs out that way. Just put them under and then it will be impossible to hit that. Who says, I don't think it's a car, I think it's a bike and here's why. Give me a word that tells you. I think it's a bike because of this word. Go ahead. Because my friends, like, there can be more than one person on a bike. Okay, maybe the fact that you're doing this with friends is not going to be a car, and that could be part of the context clue, because now you have a group of your friends all doing the same thing. There's one other word. Um, I think it's a bike because it says that. Yeah, ride. the word ride. Yeah, you don't usually say, I'm going to go ride my car. You say, drive my car, right? You can ride in a car if you don't drive, but if you're the one doing it, and this says the tire on my, so I'm the one who owns it, was flat. So I couldn't ride with my friends. Yes? When I think of ride, I think you're on like the roof just standing up there. Just... You're on the roof? Of the car. Okay, well, Jen, can you think of a bike though? Okay, let's focus on what we're really trying to accomplish so we can accomplish something. Flight loan. You guys call it a bike, don't you? Or a bicycle. All. all right. You use context clues to figure out what I was talking about. Okay? Let me do another one. By the way, we're doing this because guess what you're going to do in just a minute? You're going to come up with a nonsense word and then write a sentence so that people can see the context clues and figure out what your word really was supposed to be. You ready? Um, let's do... This word. I don't even know how to say that. Coley. Cool. Oh. You're. By the way, don't spend a lot of time on your word. Just make something up. It doesn't even matter. Okay. It could be a blank. It's just like using a weird word. Okay. Here we go. Um. Try to include a lot of context clues. I don't like to eat coley on the cob because the kernels get stuck in my teeth. Somebody tell me, what's coley? What do you call it? What do you call it, Colton? Yeah. Who says, I agree with him, it's corn. Okay, so coley is the word corn. What are some context clues that made you know, hey, this is corn? What is it? Kernel. Kernels. Corn has... Kernels. What's another context clue? Um, the cob because corn on the cob. Yeah, it's on a cob, right? Corn's the only thing I know of that's even on a cob. Yeah. Right? I can't think of anything else that would be on a cob. And then there's one other thing that's kind of a context clue because it usually happens to most people. It, the corn gets stuck. Yeah, the stuck in my. How many of you, when you eat corn on the cob, you're like. Got, you got stuck in your teeth for a long time. Yeah. All right. Look at that. All those things were context clues that told you, I know exactly what that is. I mean, you made a picture of it in your head, right? Even though you didn't know what Coley was, you had a picture of it. All right. Yes. That only happened to me with popcorn. Oh, okay. All right. So now, here's what I'd like you to do. On just a scrap piece of paper, you can use that. Don't get it yet. Write down an imaginary word. Make a word. Then write a sentence that has at least two context clues in it. Okay? All right. Go ahead. Put a piece of paper, make up a word, and then write a sentence that gives you at least two context clues. Okay. Quickly get back to your seat. Grab the paper and go. 
Okay, and then focus on the back side. Yes. You're going to make up a word that is in place of the real word. Like I took the word porn and I just changed it to something totally different. Then I wrote a sentence that could be talking about porn, and I used context clues. What if I used coley and I said this? That is some coley. Would you know what coley was? No, there's zero context clues. I wrote context clues in mine. I want you to try to write a sentence with a nonsense word but the context clues will let us know what your word really means. Okay. Could be anything. Usually pick a noun. Nouns are easier to do this with. Because you can use things to describe your nouns. So that they can lead us to what it is. Yes. Uh, don't circle yet. We're going to try to find it ourselves. you're going to do for your science is actually going to be easier than most of so. Take a pause in what you're doing. Or if you can work and think, do that. I'm going to read hers. It says, is it, is it Smootake? Smootake? Okay. The Smootake was sticky and so sour I couldn't feel my tongue. What do you think it is? The Smootake was sticky and so sour I couldn't feel my tongue. What do you think it is? Gum, is it gum? Okay. Could it be? Because what were your context clues? Sticky, and some gums are like sour. Okay. How many of you are like, yeah, it's the sticky and the sour are my context clues? What do you think it is? Uh, like a warhead? A warhead. Okay. Sour Patch Kid? Sour Patch Kid. 
Okay, Sour Patch Kid. Now, it took a couple guesses, but you guys were all on the right track, right? Because you pick something that's sticky and can't be sour. You pick something that's sticky and is really sour. You pick something that was sticky and sour, and it was the thing she was thinking of, right? So you see how the context clues, even if it wasn't exactly gum, he would have enough information that he could keep reading and enjoy what he was reading, okay? All right. Who else has one that's ready to go? All right. The word is flawless. Okay. I I like to cuddle with my pup because he is soft. Oh wait a minute. Okay. Were you? Was I supposed to put that word in there? Okay. I think you were going to do it this way. I like to cuddle with my flawless because he is soft and furry, oh. black and warm. Is that what you meant to do? Okay. What is a flaw? Flaw. Flawless. That's a hard one to say. What is it? A dog. Okay, it's a dog specifically for you. It's a puppy, right? Okay. But you guys definitely that one had. Even if I had an accident, said pup. Soft, furry, black and warm, cuddle. Those are all good context clues. Every single one of those words was a clue. By the way, I wouldn't have guessed cat because some cats don't like to cuddle, but dogs do, don't they? Yeah, okay, so a dog would have been my first guess. Cat would have been like a close second. Okay, who else is ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Klaku. Is that right? Okay. It looks like Klaku. Okay. I don't like Klaku, but I don't... Uh, like a lot of salt. Wait a minute. I like Klaku, but I don't a lot of salt. And uh, kernels. Make sure it makes sense. Here we go. What's that last word? Uh -huh. right. Okay, here we go. My Joby has a yellow tape around it because I am good at karate. Hmm. What might a Joby be? Something that would, because you're good at karate, you get yellow tape around it. Okay, what do you think? It's like uh, one of the karate outfits. Is it the karate outfit you wear? Yeah. Okay, so it's your, what is it really called? Karate belt. Okay, the karate belt. Okay. I didn't know that. All right. So that kind of helped us know what it was. Are you ready for yours? All right, here we go. His word is a sodly. Oh, sodly disease. Sorry, sodly. Here we go. Okay, I like to ride sodlies because the water flies by so fast, and you can feel the wind in your hair. Ooh, what is a sodly? Call on somebody. You think it's nice? Is it a boat? A boat? Mm -hmm, but it's a specific kind of boat. Okay. Oh, yeah. Call on one over. Uh, like those kind of boats at an amusement park that like go down a water slide. Okay. What are you specifically thinking about? Oh, it's like a speedboat. Okay, so a speedboat, so it's not like a fishing boat or anything else. What were some of the words he used that were good context clues? The yield is a boat that's going fast from... Uh, I can feel the wind in my hair. Yeah, the wind in your hair. What else? There's another good one. Uh, some water. Yeah, he mentioned water. So I knew it wasn't going to be like a motorcycle or something. Because I'm going to, hopefully you don't ride a motorcycle into the lake or anything. All right. Okay, you got yourself? Here we go. I like Klaku, but I don't like a lot of salt, and the kernels get stuck in my teeth. What's Klaku calling somebody? Uh, Fletcher? Oh, popcorn. Yeah. Okay, popcorn. Here we go. Here's another one. My squatch is loud and wakes me up in the morning. What calling somebody? Uh, yeah. A clock. Yeah. Okay, so your alarm on your clock. All right. Yours is, is that a bark? Okay, I like my bark on a bun with mustard. Call on somebody that knows what a bark is. Okay, a hot 
hot dog. Did you say a hamburger? Yeah. Okay. Was he close though? Yeah. Based on that? Yeah, because it's bun and mustard. That could be, right? Okay. All right, here we go. The word is flim flams. Humans don't like flim flam, but cats do. Who can call them somebody? Cats do. No. This one's tricky because there's not a ton of. You're saying likes it. Oh, no, no, no. One more guess. No. Okay, what were you actually doing? Cat treats. Okay, cat treats. That's like cat treats. That's basically right. cat treats. Here is what you are actually going to do. Okay? And I'll get you guys down here in just a minute. Ready? Right here, from Stella Luna, it's got three words that you probably have never really used before. In the story, it uses the words croon, sultry, and clamored. Okay? I wrote the sentences on the back from the book. So here's the sentence that used the word sultry, here's the one that used crooned, and here's the one that used clamored. Okay? What you're going to do is first in this one, see how it's like a thought bubble? Yeah. It says, what I think it means. So just think, based on the sentence and any context clues, what do you think the word crooned kind of means? Write your own definition. What does sultry probably mean? What does clamored actually mean? Then I want you to look them up in the dictionary, and we have dictionaries over there, and write down the actual meaning. Okay? Now, this is important. Please write what you think it means first. Because here's the best part. I'm not too extremely concerned if you're correct on that part. Okay? Because it's what you think. Can I really mark you wrong if it's what you think? Not really. But do use the context clues to say, well, I think it means just, and just what you kind of think it means. Then look it up and write the actual definition. Okay? So don't get hung up on, I'm going to look it up so that I'm right on these. That part doesn't matter. Do your best and then see if you are pretty close. Okay? Because the idea of using context clues is that you're not going to write an exact definition. You're just going to be close enough to what the word means that you can continue reading. Okay? All right, Declan, I'm going to kind of stop the tape for today and you can work on that sheet. And it also has the backside.